Hi, I'm Lee Chantel from Viva La Vegan and welcome to this week's question and answer. This week it is online versus in-person activism. What is best? This is a really good question and this, this is one that comes up a hell of a lot. Um, so my, my one issue with this is that um, you should have to choose between sides. Um, I do think a lot of things and working together works. I think online activism works quite well. I also think in-person activism works quite well. And I think when you combine those two together, you can really move mountains. So for example, um, you know, we had a really good uh, campaign that happened in Australia recently that Animals Australia did. They went undercover in, I think it was about 11 abattoirs in Indonesia. And they got undercover footage of the, how the animals were treated. And it was quite horrific, actually. And um, so that was brought back to Australia. And it was shown on um, one of our news uh, programs called Four Corners on the um, Australian Broadcasting Corporation channel, ABC. And this created a, a massive amount of... Um, dissatisfaction and uproar from people that supposedly didn't know these sort of things happened now online because i work in social media it just tore through everything it was all people were talking about the next day on twitter facebook google plus like everyone was sharing everything all the time and the amount of people that watched that program that night that was like the monday night it was shown and then they even had to replay it on the thursday night because they got so many people that were interested in seeing it and it was quite horrific too it wasn't just normal you know happy monday night viewing um but it was really good to see people talk about it. There was a few issues that happened from it, like it became sort of a racist thing, like, you know, Australian farmers look after, you know, their animals better than Indonesians do, or let's just stun gun the animal before they're shipped away. So instead of live export, they get killed here, which for a lot of vegans completely misses the point. And, um, you know, but it was a really good chance for vegans to to get up and say something about this is what happened the way that you can really make a difference is to become vegan and that was a time when social media was great to share stories to share articles share you know inspiring stories of um animals that were rescued and now live in farm sanctuaries and um you know just share really cool vegan recipes and just let people know that oh you know you didn't like to see this this is what you can do to make some really amazing change happen um and you know there's still stuff going on with that now it was stopped for 10 days but you know just with the the pressure that our um import export trade has on the government it, it didn't really stop for for forever which is really disappointing and those people that were involved with it did an amazing job um i think we'll i think we'll break it down now into say online first now online activism it also depends on what you call activism but say for example you have you're a vegan you have the majority of your friends that are following you or fans of yours or friends of yours on facebook are all vegan now you're sharing stuff all the time that's quite negative um horrible footage horrible photos and just saying everyone needs to go vegan now i personally don't think that's really effective activism at all if you're just sharing stuff that the majority of your vegan friends already know definitely if the majority of people that are on your facebook are non-vegan that that can be effective but i also have heard a lot of stories from friends who their friends have told them oh we just you know don't look at your posts anymore because it's just all horrible and negative stuff so i think it's just working out the best way to share information so say for example you always post happy and positive things and nice quotes and nice photos of animals and rescue stories and then every now and then you post something a bit more graphic or a bit more intense that can have a bit more of an effect because people would pay more attention to that if it's an every now and then sort of thing also um, when I was speaking at the Vita Vegan 
um, bl um, bloggers conference a few years ago in Portland, um, someone asked about whether or not you should share those sort of like graphic images or horrible sort of things on their blog and whether you should write about it. And definitely, like I definitely think you should. But then also, and this is the key thing, you need to follow it with something of how people can actually be involved and how they can change it because it's all well and good to just um, share something completely overwhelm people with like um, how horrible the situation is or something but you need to inspire people and you need to empower someone to go okay I've seen this and then I've also seen the way that I can change this so I'm going to do this now so say for example you show footage of a piggery or something in this undercover footage that you've got and then you show an example of a pig that's been rescued and lives its life at an animal sanctuary and then you can sponsor that pig and you can help that pig and then there's some recipes for vegan food that is really effective and that can help a lot more people online also online um, you can share a lot of stories there's a lot of stories if you just get like Google alerts sent to your email I find a lot of stories on Twitter and um, just share anything that's po positively related to veganism try not to get caught up in the negative stuff and this is this is a thing that happens that I see to a lot of um, my vegan friends and the majority of people I know have only gone onto Facebook to, to do activism online but then they seem to get caught up in all these massive um, debates with people and people they don't know people they don't care to know people that they will never meet so a lot of people can be really horrible to each other can call each other names can be really disrespectful and I'm um, just judgmental and I don't think that helps at all that's definitely not using your time in a productive way you can say something if you like that you you feel needs to be said but then maybe delete yourself to, for being able to follow that thread um, and um, just try not to get emotionally involved in these situations I know it's an emotional situation I know it's very emotive but you just really have to try and get removed from those sort of situations because online just makes horrible things thrive you know especially because a lot of people are anonymous and they can say whatever they like and like I said the majority of people never ever meet each other face to face so it doesn't matter what they say to you it doesn't matter what you say to them um, you know online um, because I, I work in social media marketing I give talks on um, on um, online etiquette and one of the things that I say to people is don't put something online that you wouldn't put on a postcard and send it around the world. So if you don't want your name to be attached to something or something horrible that's going to come back to you, just be really, really careful what you say. And honestly, act, don't react. Simple act, don't react. <laughs> and um, not everyone is having a go at you. Not everyone's out to get you. So um, on some other online stuff that's really, really simple, just when in your email signature, just like say, watch Earthlings or my favorite film for me, it's um, Making the Connection by the Vegan Society in the UK. So you can put that at the bottom of your email signature. You know, things like that can be really effective and it's not in your face. It's just like, oh yeah, I've never heard of that. I'll check it out. Um, but then also, you need to combine online with in person so in person you can do so many cool things like letter writing for example I run with um, my group Green Earth Group an environmental awareness group in Brisbane here and we meet in person every few months and there's also an online letter writing group on Facebook and there's, we do so many different campaigns and it's sort of whoever comes on the night what, what things they want to be they want to be involved in what information they have on a certain campaign and, and the things that other people can get involved with with them. Um, there's also outlet, outreach and leafleting. So that's another thing we do with Green Earth. We have a few people that just go out and hand out information um, in particular on the environmental impacts of um, a meat and um, lifestyle sort of diet. Um, and lifestyle so we have vegan um, leaflets and um, that we hand out to people say in busy areas like around train stations 
and um, this is a really great way to get people to see the message. Definitely some people can throw away the booklets, but the majority of people, if you actually talk to them and have a conversation, I know people that would never give away a brochure unless they've had a conversation first, and then they'll give them um, a brochure if they feel they're interested. But to get a lot of um, information out in a short time, you could leave someone buses, you could leave someone trains, and um, just you know hand them out to people, and you can get to get to know some people. Um, there's also potlucks that you can do. Um, you can go to vegan meetups, meet other people, and get involved. I've, I'm myself not really into a lot of the social aspects of um, vegan activism anymore because you know I have. I have my sort of friendship circle that I really like and I hang out with those people all the time and um, I but there's a lot of people that go to a lot of vegan meetups all the time and a lot of potlucks we do potlucks for our group as well because a lot of people want the social aspect and um, you can also organize protests you can organize events where you are at the front of an, of an event or a situation or a store where you're um, bringing um, some publicity in particular if we can get good publicity that's the trick though it has to be good publicity um, for the cause um, you could also organize you know um, I really like um, organising some um, working bees to animal sanctuaries. I think that's a really cool thing to do. I think it's also really good to bring some friends along that aren't vegan and get them to meet animals. In particular kids, they just adore the animals and um, it's just really good seeing them interact with the kids on that level. Um, and there's just so many other things you can do. One thing that we do um, with Green Earth Group as well is we have um, video viewings every month. So this year we have been having them at our local vegan grocery store, the Green Edge. And so that en encourages people to buy um, from the vegan grocery store. Um, they have dinner there first and they watch the movie. And it's just a really good, good way to get the message out to people. Um, recently I've been sort of, I didn't know if I wanted to continue the video viewings because I thought it was preaching to the converted a bit because most of the people that came were vegan or, or um, on the way to becoming vegan. But then one of my friends, um, he said that it's still important to educate vegans about certain things and that's true, um, you know, if they're not really if they don't know too much about the environmental aspects, it's good for them to learn. If they're not sure about the health aspects, it's good for them to learn those sort of facts and figures. And um, also, you know, um, to be in a social atmosphere with people and to be around like-minded people and people that get you is really important as well. So to sum it up, um, there's so many things you can do online. There's so many things you can do in person. When you combine the two of them, that's when you get the best results. So please don't think you should do one and not the other. There's people that are better suited to one thing, there's people that are better suited to another. But um, try to do as many different things as you can. Find the things that you really enjoy to do the most because you're not going to do the other stuff that often. And just focus on those things. And hopefully we can make some more changes happen. Thank you for your attention and make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week.